Hello learners, I am Harshita Chaudhary, Home Scientist and today we will be talking about the journey of fiber to fabric. We will be discussing the properties of different fibers and fabrics and we will be assessing their utility for various kind of end users. When you visit market, you see different kind of fabrics, organdy, organza, denim, voile, poplin are some of the fabrics which you see in market and each of these fabrics are made up of different kind of fibers like nylon, polyester, wool, cotton, silk. These fibers vary in terms of their properties and hence their end use varies. Today we will be discussing the following objectives. First, the functions of clothing and uses of fabrics. Second, fibers, their classification and its sources. Third, characteristics of different types of fabrics. Fourth, identification of fibers on the basis of visual examination and burning test. Fifth, process of yarn making and fabric construction. Sixth, being the differentiation between fabrics made from different yarns and their uses. Clothing is an important part of our life. It is recognized as the second skin. It plays an important role in various ceremonies. You think about what to wear in a wedding. You think what to wear every morning when you are going for work. It not only covers the body, but it protects us from adverse climatic conditions. In winters, you try and wear mufflers, scarf, coats, jackets to protect from chilly winter. Also in summers, you don't wear sweaters or scarves. Why is that? The reason being in summers you want to feel comfortable, thus you wear clothing which is comfortable, which is cool, which is more absorbent and thus you prefer dresses, tops, shorts, skirts, etc. Clothing also enhances wearer's personality. If you see a person who is wearing clothing which is crushed, dirty, you tend to perceive that the person is shabby or unclean. Whereas, if you see a person who is wearing a clothing which is well ironed, is dressed properly, you tend to perceive that the person is well groomed. Apart from that, clothing reflects person's habits, taste, social status, occupation and many other traits. Talking about occupation, clothing of a fireman is different from that of a doctor, which is different from that of a chef. The color of the clothing is also an important aspect. It is decided according to the season or climate. You tend to wear light colors in summers and dark colors like grays, browns and blacks in winters. Also, the color of the clothing varies according to the age, occasion, marital status and gender. Men, women, children tend to wear different kind of clothes. Also, the color of the clothes varies according to the gender. For kids, you tend to buy light pastel shades, whereas for teenagers, you buy bright neon colors. For elders or elderly people, you buy colors which are more subtle like grey, browns and blacks. Now there are various uses of fabrics, the first one being the dress material. The dress material is used to make different kind of garments like gowns, suits, salwars, etc. The fabrics are also used in upholstery like bed linen, cushion covers, sofa bags or curtains. Fabrics are also used to make shoes, different kind of dresses, in kitchen linen to make mops, dusters and also in medical textiles. Now the question arises, what is a fabric? I give you an example. This is the fabric of which I take out a few strands. These strands are called as the yarns. And if I untwist these yarns and unravel them, I find minute particles which are called as the fibers. So fiber can be said as the basic unit of fabric. From fiber, a yarn is being made and from yarn, a fabric is being made. A fiber is a fine hair-like strand and is the basic unit of textiles from which we make yarns and then the fabric. There are different kind of fibers which are available. Some examples being cotton, silk, wool, jute, nylon, acrylic, polyester. These fibers are classified on the basis of source and second on the basis of length. On the basis of source, the fibers can be of two types, natural and man-made fibers. Whereas on the basis of length, 
fibers can again be of two types the first one being long and filament fibers and second are the short length staple fibers firstly we will talk about the classification on the basis of source the fibers can be classified into two first natural sources and second man made sources fibers obtained from natural sources are obtained from nature and they can be classified into two types the first one being the cellulosic fibers and the second one being the protein fibers cellulosic fibers are obtained from plant source the examples being cotton linen jute etc whereas the protein fibers are obtained from animal source example being wool and silk the second category which is of man made source fibers they are made by the man in the industry they are again classified into two types the first one being the regenerated fiber and the second one being the synthetic fiber now regenerated fibers are different from synthetic fibers they are made using raw material as wood pulp cotton linters etc they are dissolved in chemicals and this solution is used to make fibers the examples being rayon casein soya bean and acetate fiber synthetic fiber on the other hand are nylon polyester and acrylic and they are made using petrochemicals as raw material the next classification is on the basis of length the first one are the filament fibers which are measured in yards or meters they are long length fibers and the examples are silk and all synthetic fibers second are the staple fibers which are measured in inches or centimeters they are short length fibers and the examples are cotton linen and wool now that you have understood the classification of the fiber each and every fiber have different properties and thus their end use varies now we'll be discussing about the properties of various fibers the first one being the cellulosic fibers of which the first fiber is the cotton fiber it is a seed hair fiber which is white cream or light brown in color it is absorbent thus is mostly prefer in making summer clothing it is porous cool though it wrinkles very easily the fabrics made of cotton are strong durable and easy to wash thus the cotton fibers are used for making summer clothes towels bed sheet and pillow covers the second fiber is the flax fiber which is also called by the name of linen it is a bast fiber which is obtained from the stalk of the plant it is shiny smooth durable easy to wash although it wrinkles easily is cool and absorbent linen fibers like cottons are used for making summer clothing and also table linen The third fiber is the jute fiber and like flax it is obtained from the stalk of the plant it is short and lustrous fiber though is hairy and rough thus jute fibers are blended with other fibers and are used to make various kind of accessories like shoes bags etc it is also used for making cords etc next is the protein fiber of which the first one is the wool it is obtained from the fleece of domestic goats sheep and rabbits It is a weak fiber, soft, smooth, absorbent. It does not wrinkle easily and acts as an insulator. It entraps the body heat and does not allow the body heat to escape. Thus, in winters we prefer using wool as a fiber for making sweaters, jackets, etc. Also, the wool fiber is affected by washing soaps, powder and friction. For woolens you must have seen we use the process of kneading and squeezing and not friction washing the reason being that wool is affected by friction also for washing wool we prefer detergents like easy gentle etc which are mild and do not affect the wool fiber as mentioned earlier that wool fibers are used to make garments for winters the second fiber is the silk fiber it is a protein filament fiber produced by silk worm It is soft, fine, smooth, lustrous, warm and stronger than wool. Silk fibers are generally used for making garments, especially the formal or the party wear. Next are the man-made fibers. The first one is the regenerated fiber, rayon. It is also called as the artificial silk or the art silk. It is lustrous, smooth, cool, absorbent. It wrinkles easily and is thermoplastic in nature. thermoplastic 
Thermoplastic means that the rayon fiber is heat sensitive and it is affected by the application of heat. These fibers tend to get softened and melt on application of heat. Rayon fibers are generally used for making the garments. The next category is that of the synthetic fibers which includes nylon, polyester and acrylic. These fibers are easy to care and maintain. They have good strength. They do not wrinkle easily although they catch fire easily. Like rayon, they are thermoplastic in nature and melt and soften on heating. Synthetic fibers are generally used to make apparels, blankets and home furnishings. Now after the properties of the fiber, there are various ways to identify the fibers. You can identify the fibers by visual test or by the feel of the fabric and the second one being the burning test. Firstly, we will be talking about the visual test and the feel of the fabric which is used to identify the fibers. The first fiber which is cotton, it appears dull in appearance and lustrous when starched. It feels so smooth and soft to touch and gives a cool feeling. The second is the linen fiber which has low to medium luster. It is soft and smooth in texture when touched and gives a warm feeling. Jute fiber is dull in appearance, has rough and hairy texture. Thus, as mentioned before, it is blended with other fibers and then used. It gives a warm and a rough feeling. Next fiber is the wool fiber, which is medium to low, which has medium to low luster. It is poor in quality. Poor quality wool has no luster. It is soft, smooth and absorbent, but is also bulky. Whereas it is warm to touch. This is a wool fabric and when you have to feel or see the touch of the fabric, you tend to feel the fabric like this. Silk on the other hand is a delicate looking and lustrous fabric. It is small, soft, smooth and light and it is warm to touch. The next fibre is the rayon fibre. It can be lustrous or without it. It is soft and shiny but heavier than silk and gives a cool feeling. The next are the synthetic fibres. They can be dull or semi-dull or lustrous. Acrylic fibers look very much similar to wool. Also, they are heat sensitive and soften and melt on application of heat. Most of the fabrics feel warm when worn. After the visual or the feel of the fabric test, we do the burning test of the fabric to find out about the composition of the fibers. In case of burning test, we take out a few strands of the fiber in burning test, we take out a few strands from the fabric and expose them to flame. We see the behavior of these fibers on approaching the flame, inside the flame, outside the flame, the residue which is produced after the burning and also the odor which is produced while burning. The first fibers are the cellulosic fibers which includes cotton, linen, jute and regenerated rayon. When approached near the frame, the cotton or the cellulosic fiber catches fire easily. They produce a bright flame and have an afterglow. They smell like burning paper and afterwards they produce a light, feathery, greyish white, smooth ash. The burning of cellulosic fibers is very similar to that of paper because paper is also made up of cellulose. Like paper gives an afterglow, it gives smell of burning paper and produces a greyish ash. Similar thing is reported in the cellulosic fibers. Next are the protein fibers which include wool and silk. When approached near the flame, they smolder and burn. Inside the flame, they produce a slow flickering flame and sizzle and curl. That is, they tend to move away from the flame. They give the smell of burning hair since they are proteinaceous in nature and are here or also made up of protein. They produce a dark ash and a crushable beet. The third category is of the synthetic fibers which includes nylon, polyester and acrylic. They shrink on approaching the flame. As mentioned before that these fibers are thermoplastic in nature, thus they soften, melt and burn. These fibers are made up of chemicals, that is petrochemicals, thus on burning they produce the smell of chemicals and produce a hard, black, uncrushable bead. 
Now that you have learned about different kind of fibers and the ways to test them, we'll move on to the yarn. Various kind of fibers are put together, they are given a twist and a yarn is made. A yarn is nothing but a long continuous length of interlocked fibers. The strands of fibers are brought together to each other by twisting. The yarns can be used for various purposes like sewing, crocheting, knitting, embroidery and rope making. This is a woolen yarn. And if you see, the fibers have been twisted together to form a yarn. These are the fibers of which the yarn is being made and they are twisted together to form this one complete yarn. Now the yarns are formed by the process of spinning in which the group of fibers are pulled, drawn and twisted together to make a yarn. The twist given in fiber can be of two types. One is the Z twist and the second one is the S twist. Now Z twist is an anti-clockwise direction whereas the S twist in the clockwise direction. The quality and the strength of yarn is affected by the number of twist you give per inch. Lesser the number of twist per inch, bulkier and less strong is the yarn whereas more the number of twist, finer and stronger is the yarn. Yarns are spun by two methods, the first one being the hand spinning and second is the machine spinning. Talking about the hand spinning, it is generally done on charkha and the yarns spun on charkha have different thicknesses. Thick yarns are used for making floor covering, medium thickness yarns are used for making upholstery items, whereas fine quality yarns are used for making dress materials. Talking about the manufacturing process of yarns by machine, it involves various steps, the first one being cleaning, second carding, third combing, fourth spinning and fifth being the winding. Firstly, we'll talk about the first process of cleaning. When the natural fibers are harvested or collected, they contain a large number of impurities like dry leaves, stem, seeds, dirt, etc. and they are removed during the cleaning process. Further, after the yarns are cleaned, they are carded, which is done in the carding step. In this, the yarns tend to get matted and they tend to stick to each other. Thus, in the carding process, the yarns are opened, they are parallelized and made in a form of a sliver. The carded web of fibers is turned into a rope and that is called as the sliver. The third step is that of a combing. It is an optional step. It is used for making fine quality yarn. The carded slivers are combed to separate long and short fibers with the help of series of combs. Combing is very similar to the combing which we do to our hair. It is generally done to parallelize the yarns, to remove the knots which have been created during the formation of the yarn and also to remove the short fibers which have been left in the carding process. Next, the fourth step is that of the spinning. The carded and the combed slivers are further drawn and spun into yarns. And lastly, the yarns which have been spun are winded on different packages. The yarn is wound on different packages according to their weight or length of the yarn and its end use. The example being the ball, which is generally used for hand knitting, reels or bobbins, which are used for sewing, hanks and cones. Now, the yarns can be classified on the basis of the structure. The yarns can be classified into two types, the first one being the simple yarn and the second one being the novelty yarn. Simple yarn can again be classified into two types. The first is the single strand yarn and second is the multi strand or ply yarn. The novelty yarns can also be of different types that is knotted, loop, slub or feather yarn. Talking about the simple yarns and its types in detail, firstly we will talk about the simple yarns. Simple yarns have uniform thickness, they have smooth surface, they have equal number of twist per inch along its length and most standard fabrics for clothing and household use are made using these yarns. The simple yarns can again be of two types. The first is the single strand yarn that is an assemblage of fibers evenly twisted together. The second are the ply yarns where two or more simple yarns are twisted together to form a ply yarn. They can be termed as 2-ply, 3-ply or 4-ply. If you see this diagram, there are two single yarns 
which have been twisted together to form a two ply yarn. In this, there are three single strands which are twisted together to form a three ply yarn. And in this, similarly, there are four single yarns which have been twisted together to form a four ply yarn. Giving you an example, this is a four ply yarn. On untwisting it, we find that it is made up of four strands of yarns. These are the single yarns and when twisted together, they are forming one four ply yarn. The next is the cord yarn, which is a multiple strand yarn. Three, four or five ply, ply yarns are twisted together to get a cord yarn and they are generally used for making ropes. In the diagram, it is clearly visible that three single yarns are making a ply yarn. So this yarn is a three ply yarn and seven ply yarns are being used together to form a cord yarn. After the simple yarns, the second category is that of the novelty yarns. You must have seen your surroundings or you must have seen on the cushion covers, curtains, your dresses that there are few yarns which provide a different kind of texture and appearance to your garment or the fabric. These yarns are the novelty yarns which are created using many unusual features to add different texture and appearance to the fabric. They are fancy yarns which bring an unusual look, variation and interesting effects to the fabric. These fabrics are bulkier and softer to touch. Talking about the different kinds of novelty yarns, the first ones are the loop yarns which have loops placed continuously along its length and they are generally used for woolen fabrics. The second ones are the knots or knops yarns which has knots made along the length of the yarn. The example being woolen and scarves. The third category is the slub yarns which has ornamental effects in the form of soft untwisted thick and thin and twisted areas at frequent intervals throughout the length. That is the some areas are twisted high whereas some areas are left untwisted in order to create an effect of thick and thin yarns. The fourth category is that of the feather yarn, which are also called as the chenille yarns because they have soft and fuzzy surface. They are used to make rugs because they add three dimension to the rugs. They are also used to create pile on the fabric surface. Now after the yarns, a fabric is being made using various techniques of weaving, knitting, felting, netting, etc. A fabric is a pliable, strong sheet made of fibers and yarns. The two common method very popular of fabric construction are weaving and knitting. As you can see here, the weaving is being carried out and here the knitting is being carried out to form a yarn. Here the weaving is being carried out and here the knitting is being carried out to form a fabric. So firstly talking about weaving, weaving is the interlacing of two sets of yarn that is warp and weft at 90 degree angles to each other. This is a woven fabric. The yarns, the yarns running lengthwise are called as the warp yarns, whereas the yarns which run crosswise are called as the weft yarn. In case of a woven fabric, the yarns intersect at 90 degree angles to each other as shown in the figure. Also, along the length of the woven fabric on both the sides, and yarns are woven very densely and the portion is called as the selvage. Now if this is the fabric and these are the two edges of the fabric, this is the selvage which is the finished side of the fabric. Even the second side of the fabric is finished. These two finished edges are termed as the selvages. It does not allow the fabric or the yarns to come out from the lengthwise edge. Now the weaves can be broadly classified as basic and novelty weaves. The basic weaves are of three types, plain, twill and satin weave. We will be discussing each one of them in detail. The first one is the plain weave which is called as the homespun, tabby or taffeta weave. It is easiest to weave where one yarn, where one weft yarn alternatively moves over one and under another warp yarn. It is very similar to the kind as in if these are the warp yarns and this is the weft yarn which is being moving. The movement of yarns is like this, as in after one warp, a weft has been inserted and again a warp is being inserted followed by a weft yarn. 
It is an inexpensive weave, more suitable for printing and embroideries. The examples for which are muslin, cambric, organdy, poplin and voile. The second is the twill weave which is woven or 3 to 4 hardness loom. In this, one weft yarn moves over two and under one warp yarn. It is distinguished by continuous diagonal lines called as the veils and variation in diagonal lines produces various designs of twills. As can be seen in the figure, the diagonal lines which you can see in the fabric, these are the veils and when these veils are arranged in different pattern, they can be used to create various designs. A twill weave fabric is tightly woven, is suitable for work clothes and also for men's clothing. The examples of twill woven fabric are gabardine, denim, jean and tweed. Next is the satin weave. It is woven on 5 to 12 harness loom. It is characterized by the floats which are present on the surface of the fabric. There is no design visible on the face of the fabric but it has smooth and shiny surface. As can be seen, this is a satin fabric which is characterized by the floats on the surface. They can be seen under a microscope and the fabric is smooth and shiny in appearance. The example for this kind of weave is a satin fabric and is suitable for making formal wear garments. The second process of fabric construction is knitting. It is the process of formation of loops of yarns and drawing of new loops through those formed previously. That is, in knitting there is interlooping of yarns whereas in weaving there is interlacing of yarns. Knitting can be of two types that is warp knitting and weft knitting. In weft knitting the yarns move either from right to left or from left to right whereas in warp knitting the yarns run lengthwise. The knitted fabrics are well known for their fit, comfort, stretchability, warmth, absorbency and wrinkle resistance. They are used to make various kind of garments like casual wear, party wear, sports wear, undergarments as well as household articles like bed sheet, bed covers and blankets. Now lastly, coming out to the final summary of what we have learned today. We have learned about the clothes, their function and importance, fibers and their classification. We have also learned how to identify the fibers on the basis of the visual and feel and the burning test. After the fibers, the yarns are being made. So we have learned about the yarns, their classification and the process of yarn making. After yarns, the fabric is being made. So we have learned about the fabric, method of construction of fabrics, its different types and end uses. I hope this lesson will be useful for our learners in knowing about the different kinds of fibers and fabrics which are available in the market and can be put to different kind of end use. Thank you.